Hello again, Lockpicking Paul here, and this is a short follow-up video to the um, Covert Companion Lever Lock modification. Uh, I did a part one and a part two, and I've had a bunch of requests uh, for the dimensions of the tools, so people can make their own. So I just thought I'd do a part three, uh, follow up with some of those details. Uh, this this is my pretty much finished uh, Covert Companion. It's getting pretty fat these days. Um, I think I've probably reached peak Covert Companion size. It still goes in my pocket okay, but uh, it was getting a little wide. And I got it a bit wider recently with the addition of a Riv Pick, uh, which actually makes this thing a heck of a lot more usable. So if you don't have a Riv Pick, first thing I would say is go get one of those um, because it does enable you to pick a lock single pin much more normally but it will expand it slightly because the roof pick is about twice as wide as the four tools it replaces in the main set but anyway that's not what this video is about it's about these things it's this this is the uh, lever lock bolt tensioner and the lever lock overlifter and this also doubles as a really quite a nice um, traveler's hook as well so let's Take a look at the measurements. Hopefully we can see these. So the tensioner, um, which has uneven sides to it, largely because you've got a choice of uh, fitting it in the lock then, and you want the tensioner up and out of the way. And in part two, I do show this in place in the top of the keyway. So one side, this side here is 15 millimeters. It's 76 millimeters along the top and it's 20 millimeters on the longer side all of the bends in all of the tools are um, cold bent so I haven't, I haven't heated them um, and i prefer not to as a rule i tend to find things that get a little bit weaker if you heat them um, so but cold bent seems to work absolutely fine i have never had one break on me the only other thing i would say is these legs are marginally bent inwards you can see it on here um, that is to give it an interference fit or a friction fit in those holes because if you don't do that it will fall out doesn't need much of a bend on it but if you hold it upside down it doesn't fall out all right what else to say um oh yeah the fittings in here you need to drill out two of the posts so either side, two posts, just a two millimeter center hole drilled through because they're not completely hollow um, with a pillar drill or a Dremel or something like that. The, the overlifter part, which can be used to also unlock uh, rim dead latches if you hold it this way, this way up. So the flat there, 20 millimeters, 15 millimeters on the upright, 59 millimeters along the top. You'd get away with 60 quite happily. Um, and I'll show you that in a second. In fact, I'll show you that now. So if you fold this round on itself, you've actually got some room to maneuver, space to maneuver here. You could go 60, 62, 63 mil, and it would still fit fine. I choose to use this tag on here, but you don't need it. Um, so you've actually got quite a little bit of uh, space to experiment with that. The only other thing that makes this tool a little awkward to make is the circle that slots over the post. That has to be heated to get that kind of a tight bend on it. So I, I heat this with a blowtorch to cherry red, then use a pair of needle nose pliers to, to wrap that around a nail, like a standard wood nail, of the same diameter of the post. Um, and that actually gets a, good, a really good fit. Um, now, in terms of taking measurements, I measure to the outside edge of the metal. So this up right here, the 15 millimeters, that's 15 millimeters from the outside edges to give the dimensions. And that really is, A, that's a critical dimension for this particular tool. If you wanted to open rim dead latches and um, lever locks, just that, that seems to be a good compromise between getting for both locks. If it was any shorter, 
it wouldn't open a rim, a rim dead latch, it wouldn't reach the lever. So it has to sit in here at a slight angle, so it comes out like that. So it isn't proud of the actual casing, but it's definitely not a flush fit. Right, I think that was everything else I wanted to say about this. Oh, and the material. Yeah, it's worth mentioning it's uh, 1.6 millimeter stainless spring wire. It's the same stuff you can get on Amazon. Um, and I buy mine in straight sections rather than a coil. If it was a coil, it'd be a bit of a pain for straightening out. So I would definitely recommend buying the straight section versions. But it comes in sort of six inch lengths, a bundle of six inch lengths, which you can sort of chop up. Uh, and that's it. That's part three for this tool. I don't think there are going to be any more uh, because I think, I've, like I said, I've reached peak fatness for this thing. Um, but it does make really quite a cool fidget toy. And I am a bit of a fidget, so I'm constantly fidgeting with something. And this is this keeps my attention. Anyway, that's it. Hope you enjoyed that and found it useful and uh, enjoy your pick making. Cheers.